your bar, your launcher, as well as your notification daemon, they're not windows, they're layers. And if you've ever wondered why your blur isn't working on Rafi, or why your waybar animations feel off, it's because you haven't touched layer rules yet. Most people have at least heard about window rules in the Hyperlan wiki. They're straightforward, okay, as you can see if I just showed you in the wiki before I move on. They're right here, right, in this section right over here. They are pretty straightforward. They just control stuff about your windows, like their behavior when you need them to do certain stuff like appear on a certain workspaces, or their appearance, like when you want them to change border colors when they're floating, for example. But layers, that's where your bar lives, your app launcher, your notification center, your logout menu, all the stuff around your windows. And Hyperland gives you full control over them. You just have to know how to use it. Today, I will be showing you the exact method, okay, that layer rules work by. The layer rules that I personally use and how to apply them to your own setup. Okay, first, let's get clear on the difference. A window is an application. Your browser, your terminal, your file manager, those are all windows, okay? They tile, like if I showed you, this is a window. This is also a window. And this is also a window. Basically, anything, any application, okay, is going to be a window. They tile, they float, and they follow window rules. A layer is different. Layers are surfaces that exist outside the normal window system. They sit either above or below your windows, and they don't tile. Your bar is a layer, okay? This bar that you see right over here, that is a layer. Your app launcher right here is a layer, along with any other menus that you create, okay, using Rafi or basically any other program, all of those are layers as well. Your wallpaper actually is a layer too, along with your notification pop-ups, as you can see, this is a layer, as well as this over here, as well as the logout menu, as well as the lock screen, basically anything that's not a window can be pretty much considered a layer. And this is why window rules don't affect them. You can write all the window rules you want for Waybar and nothing will happen because Waybar isn't a window, it's a layer. And that's where layer rules come in, okay? Right here. Layer rules let you control blur, animations, and transparency behavior for these surfaces. And once you actually start using them, your setup goes from almost polished to actually polished. Now, before you can write a layer rule, you need to know the namespace of the layer that you want to target. Every layer has a namespace, okay? A name that identifies it. Waybar's namespace is Waybar. So if I were to show you that, you just have to type in the command hyperctl layers in order to identify the namespace of every single layer that's currently open. And as you can see, SWWW daemon, that is the wallpaper, okay? As I mentioned, your wallpaper is also a layer all the time. So that is one namespace for the wallpaper. Then apart from that, we have Waybar, which is another layer. And so that's the namespace that's being displayed right over here. The one for Rafi, okay? If you wanted to identify the namespace for Rafi and you didn't want to mess up the case, then this is something that you can do along with something like wlogout because there's no way that you can actually run this hyperctl layers command unless you actually implement a delay, okay? Like you're trying to keep this layer open and at the exact same time execute a command and that doesn't work out very well unless you want to set up a custom keybind which is too much effort for not much gain so instead of that you can just type sleep to hyperctl layers and what this does is executes the command after two seconds so you have time to open any layer that you want which means that it's going to be displayed so as you can see here this displays the x y uh, what do you call this the width and height of the window along with the x and y coordinates for rafi right over here and if i wanted to do this for Anything else, let's say my logout menu, I just have to open that, wait for two seconds, you can see the output preview here. And now if I go here, it says logout dialog. It doesn't say W logout because logout dialog is the namespace that's going to be used whenever a logout dialog is actually being displayed, whether it be through W logout or through any other logout manager, okay? Now you know how to identify every single namespace for every single app that you want to customize. Let me show you one last time. Let's say I wanted to do this for my notification panel. I just have to keep this open. And as you can see right here, it's Sway NC Control Center. And for this notification right here, I'll just run that again. Okay. And there you go. Sway NC notification window, which is this notification window right over here. That is how you can get to know the namespace that you're supposed to target for a layer rule. And this is going to be the first step every time. You want to find the namespace and then write the rule. Now, the next thing you want to do is actually go about writing a layer rule. Now the syntax for a layer rule is quite straightforward. All you have to do is type in layer rule, okay, layer rule equals match colon namespace, match namespace, and then you have to actually pass in the namespace right here, okay, along with your layer rule. 
So basically what you're saying is match any layer with this namespace, okay, and apply this rule to it. That's it. So if I were to write one in front of you right now, it would be something like layer rule equals match namespace. Let's say I wanted to apply this to waybar, match namespace waybar blur on. So I want to turn on blurring for waybar right over here. If I had any sort of translucent or semi-transparent surface, that would be blurred right like so with this acrylic blur that you're seeing on this terminal window. You can also stack multiple rules for the same namespace. So if I wanted to, I can type in my other time layer rule equals match colon namespace, match namespace, waybar, come on, waybar. And here I just type ignore alpha, ignore alpha 0.5. Now what this does is basically tells Hyperline to ignore pixels below a certain th transparency threshold whenever you're applying blur. So without this, the blur might not actually show properly and you might get lots of artifacts and the blur basically appearing in places where it has no business appearing in. So in order to prevent that from happening, you just need to set ignore alpha to 0.5, which is 50% if you were to convert this into a percentage value. Now, let me show you the layer rules that I actually use and what each one does. Let's just open config hyper modules window rules conf. And if you notice, the config structure over here is not the same as an ordinary hyperline config. I've basically modularized it, okay? I've taken one file, split it into multiple different files, which is something that ex I explain how to do in detail in the program, which is the first link in the description. I also teach you how to make custom theme switchers like the one that you saw earlier, right over here, along with wallpaper switchers, hold on, wallpaper switchers like this one here, and waybar layout switchers from scratch as well. So you don't have to copy anybody else's dot files. You can actually write stuff like this on your own. And so if you want to learn how to make setups like this one on your own, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out the program. In this theme switchers module, which is over two hours long, I cover exactly what theme switchers are, the different kinds, so on and so forth. And basically the code part of how you're actually supposed to go about implementing this. So if you want to learn how to make a custom theme switcher and a setup like this one, Go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out the program. Now, let's open this right here and let's just delete the old swap file. Now, let's zoom in so you can see here properly. Now, I'm going to explain each of the layer rules that I have so far. Now, as for blurring waybar, there are a couple of different ones right over here. Okay, this one's actually a duplicate, so let's just get rid of that. Great. Now, these two are actually used for blurring waybar. The third one is actually used to disable animations. Now, this one I will get to in just a second. First thing we're doing is just matching this namespace, okay? That's going to be waybar, and we're just turning the blur on, okay? Pretty simple stuff. Now, here what we're doing is basically ignore alpha, which I explained earlier. It's basically going to turn off blur for a pixel that is below a certain opacity threshold. Now, if I actually comment this line, and there you go. That is what happens when you don't have ignore alpha turned to 0 0.5. Okay, by default, ignore alpha is something is something around zero. And so what it does is basically blurs everything, which looks nice if it's certain kind of if it's a certain kind of bar, like something like ultra minimal here. But because that's not the case with velvet line, it just ends up looking super odd because it stretches from one end of the screen to the other. So we'll just turn that back on. Let's just get rid of that. And there you go. Now it's making the bar look perfect again. Now, after that, we're basically turning off animations for Waybot. Now, why is this necessary? Well, take a look at this. If I turn no anim off, okay, there's going to be an animation whenever I reload Waybot, and it doesn't look too bad, but that's not actually what it's supposed to do. Okay, however, if I keep no animations on, which is basically going to turn off animations, and then I reload, it actually ends up looking even cleaner. And that is why I turn off animations for Waybar specifically, because the simple act of just killing and restarting Waybar alone has plenty of an animation for it to seem like something's actually going on. So there's no need for an actual further animation to be added on top of that, which is why I leave it this way. The next thing is going to be blurring sway and C. So we've just basically turned on blur for both of these namespaces for the control center, which is going to be this part, as well as the notification window, which is this part. Okay, then what we're doing is applying ignore alpha to that as well. Then for W logout, we're changing the animation to fade. If I don't do that, what's going to happen is it's going to slide in from the right. And that does not look very good because it actually makes it feel like it's a layer. But you want the logout menu to feel like an application, which is why you just want it to fade in and fade out. And apart from that, we have blur again. 
Lastly, the last layer rule that we have so far is going to be for Rafi. Now here, what we're doing is changing the animation to pop in 90%. And with that, this is what it's going to look like. Otherwise, by default, what you're going to see is something more along the lines of this. Now, it might not have been that bad if it were coming down from the bottom instead of the right side. And maybe that's something I could add later on, but it doesn't look as minimal and as pretty as changing the animation itself to be just pop in 95%. As you can see, it looks pretty cool. And this works for every single Rafi window that I open. This layout switcher is made with Rafi along with the wallpaper switcher as well as this theme switcher as well, because of which all of it has this sweet animation. There's a couple more options that we have inside of layer rules themselves. Okay, as you can see here, we've already discussed the most important ones like no animation, disables animations, blur, enables blur, blur pop-ups. So if there's any sort of pop-up window from the layer itself, you can blur that as well. Something like a tool click, tool tip. Okay, that, that can be blurred if you turn down the transparency or if you turn down the opacity, to increase the transparency and turn down the opacity. For the tool tip, you can blur the tool tip as well. That's what blur pop-ups is all about. Then ignore alpha. This is just going to make blur ignore pixels of opacity A or lower. Dim around is going to dim everything behind the layer. So if I open this, everything else will be dimmed. X-ray sets the blur X-ray mode for a particular layer. So if I wanted to, let's say I had blur, okay, blur on this Rafi window. Instead of it actually peeking through into the app that is right behind it, it would peek through to the wallpaper. Then animation, this we've already discussed for Rafi. It allows you to set a specific animation style for this layer. Then order sets the order relative to other layers. This is basically Z index if you've messed around with CSS. Okay, it can either be bottom, bottom or top. A higher end basically means closer to the edge of the monitor. It can be negative as well and is zero if unspecified. Above lock, this is basically to control whether a layer displays above lock screen or not. And this is no screen share, hides the layer from screen sharing by drawing a black rectangle over it. Pretty simple stuff. That's it. And here, what they're doing is just basically different syntax for the same thing. Okay. And there's actually a different name for this. Okay. These are named rules. Okay. This is a named rule because it has a name. And these are anonymous rules because they have no name. And that is my full layer rule setup, along with most, if not all, of the layer rules, props, and effects that you're going to be using in order to make stuff like this right here. The real value, however, is in understanding the patterns so you can build your own. Run hyper-CTL layers to find namespaces, check whatever layers your tools create, and then decide. Do you want blur? What animation? What animation are you going to choose for this particular app? Should you disable animations to avoid flicker? So on and so forth. Every setup is different, right? Your tools are different, but the process is the same. And if you want a complete breakthrough of all, and if you want a complete walkthrough of all Hyperland configurations, not just these layer rules, but window rules, animations, keybinds, and all of it explained from first principles. That's exactly what Hyper Accelerator covers, along with making cool stuff like theme switchers and wallpaper switchers, along with everything else that I just showed you. So if you want to learn how to make something like this, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check the program out right now. If you liked the video, hit like. If you loved it and want to see more like this in your feed, hit subscribe and I will see you next time. Stay rising. Mwah.